We're going to preview the final four here and the four matchups that we have on this weekend. We're going to give you our pick six, our men's best bet, our women's best bet, our favorite over under from any of those four matchups of the two games tonight in Cleveland or the two tomorrow out in Phoenix. A prop that we like from final four weekend A special on the FanDuel Sportsbook, which is a very fun market to look at with some plus money prices. And we will pick the women's national champion, what our favorite bet is there, because the next time we speak, we're recapping the game on a Monday morning here on the early line. And in this time, we will preview and break down each and every game. So, DRS, let's start out with your men's best bet for Final Four weekend and Final Four Saturday night out in the desert. Now, not a lot of fun here, right? Because typically for myself, I want to take a best yep. bet and we're going to root for the overs. But you can't just take a blind over if you don't actually believe in the handicap here. And when you talk about the Alabama Crimson Tide on offense, what do you think about a lot of points scoring? Well, I'm going to buck that trend here this weekend, Ben. And I'm going to take Alabama's team total under 74 and a half going up against UConn. We've talked about it a few times already this week. Look, I think Alabama can create some havoc here against UConn. They're a really good basketball team. But the three-point shot is where they want to kill you you from that range you can't do that against yeah. UConn if you're going to go against the will of UConn where they say we don't let you shoot three-point shots and we defend it well and they go well who cares we're going to put up 40 and make 20 of them well then you're probably going to get a cover if not the outright win from the Alabama Crimson Tide but I don't believe in that here it's crazy to say because oh yeah take them under 85 and a half under 90 and a half no 74 and a half I'm going to go under there I don't think Alabama gets to that number of 75 points I think UConn's defense is just too much and they strangle them Ben, in the second half here give me the under all right so let's combine our best bets then and just lay 11 and a half with connecticut because i think uconn team total over 87 and a half points is my best bet for the men's final Mm. four and i will just say this round of 64 there's 16 matchups on both thursday and friday round of 32 you've got eight each day by the time you get to the second weekend the numbers become sharper you don't have some of those mid-majors that maybe we're not expecting to make that run in the tournament known for madness these numbers are rather difficult and especially with the numbers at nine and a half in favor of purdue and 11 and a half in favor of the huskies but here's why i like uconn's team total to the over of 87 and a half points well for one uconn is the most efficient offense in all of college basketball and alabama's defense ranks outside of the top 100 but i'll go a little bit further Alabama played six SEC games versus teams that ranked in that conference with a top 15 offense in terms of efficiency nationally. They allowed 93 or more points in five of those six games. An average in that six-game sample size of 98.5 points per game. In three of those five games when they gave up 93-plus, the team on the opposing side scored 102 or Mm. more. So I'm hoping UConn gets close to 90, 88, in fact, or more. I think the Huskies against an Alabama defense, that struggles. They gave up 82 to Clemson. UNC scored 87. Charleston put up 96. This is a defense that is not very good. And I think UConn will have its efficient way tomorrow night on a Final Four Saturday. Give me UConn team total over 87 and a half. I think it makes some sense, too, because, again, you're talking about an Alabama defense that hasn't been that great and also tempo, which means UConn's going to get more shots than maybe they anticipated. From my end of it as well, Ben, and sometimes this always factors in, maybe it's right, maybe it's wrong. Where are we playing this game? In Arizona, in a football stadium, where this is going to be the first game that these two teams play in that stadium. Monday night be, might be a little bit different. Let's just say if, you know, hey, you know what? Struggled a little bit on Saturday night, but Monday, now I'm used to the sight lines here as we play all the way through. So I'm excited to watch this game play out, but also taking that under 74 and a half by saying, for me, Alabama shooting the three-point shot might not be as good just because of the actual place they're playing in, as well as the team that they're playing here. We'll find out certainly tomorrow. So now we go to our favorite bet for the women's NCAA tournament and Final Four Friday night. What does Donnie Wright's side like in the two matchups that we have in Cleveland, Ohio? Let's keep it simple here. It's Iowa minus two and a half. It's going to be an unbelievable matchup against UConn in here. Quite frankly, I'm surprised that this line is only two and a half. Just goes to show you how good UConn's been. And also UConn, one of those teams where getting injured steadily throughout the season, you sort of had them off of your odds. We're like, eh, UConn's a nice little team, but they're not going to factor in to the national championship picture, let alone make it to the final four and possibly a championship game. And here they are. Paige Beckers has been wonderful for that team. They just don't have enough depth for me to stay in this game. And if Caitlin Clark 
mark and closes her wheel early on. Let's take a look at this, Ben. One of those first two logo three-point shots goes down. It's going to be a great night here for Iowa. I'm going to take them in this game. Yes, it is a public standard here for me at minus two and a half, but I'm going to ride that out anyway. I think Iowa's the better team and has more depth than UConn. They should be able to win this game and get to that final on Sunday. It gets to one of my favorite over-unders of the weekend as well. Now, UConn has been one of the second or the second most efficient defense in the country. Her hoop stats where Karina Mustafa works for, they have them ranked as the second most efficient defense in the country, only behind South Carolina. The Gamecocks can strangle you on the defensive side of the floor. UConn has not allowed more than 73 points in an NCAA tournament game in their four victories to get to their 23rd appearance in a Final Four Oh, yeah, you bet. That's the most in women's college basketball history. I'll get to why, though, I think Iowa can attack that Connecticut defense in just a moment. My favorite bet for the women's Final Four is NC State getting 11 and a half points. I said it when Krina was on. NC State is not scared of this moment. They have a senior-laden backcourt that is incredibly explosive and athletic. Isaiah James, Sanaya Rivers. And when you look at the resume, when you look at the slate for the Wolfpack to get here, we'll go to the NCAA tournament. Sweet 16 against Stanford, who many people thought was going to contend for a national championship. One of the four best prices to cut down the nets entering this tournament. Isaiah James, the lefty, went off. They upset the Cardinal outright as a four-and-a-half-point dog. They beat Texas outright as a three-and-a-half-point dog in the Elite Eight, behind some more sharp shooting from Isaiah James. And when you look at NC State in non-conference, they beat UConn and they beat Colorado by double digits. Those two teams saw the Sweet 16 and the second weekend. And of course, Connecticut is here in the Final Four. They beat Texas in the NCAA tournament, did NC State. So when I look at the Wolfpack, they beat UCLA, by the way, another Sweet 16 team in the NCAA Women's Tournament. When I look at this NC State team, I know they can hoop, and I know they can hang. Give me 11 and a half points because they have won outright in their two games as a dog into the second weekend, now into the Final Four. South Carolina, although winning, did not cover either of their two spreads against Indiana in the Sweet 16 or in the Elite Eight either in that matchup against Oregon State. Yeah, no respect for NC State men's and or women's team getting close to double digits on both sides of the equation. But there is a chance and also getting hot at the right time. And even we can equate this to the men's game, talking about the women's team for NC State. You're not playing with house money anymore. Hey, didn't think you could get this far. Well, here they are and they're playing great basketball. So why not? I'm interested to see how this game pans out because it just feels like a formality even on both sides. Like, Ah, South Carolina's team will easily dispatch of NC State. We'll see if that actually winds up, but I am rooting for a close game here early on because that's the game, Ben, I'm going to be up for. How do you like that? Yeah, well, I figured we would get to that just a few more uh-huh. times throughout this pick yeah. six for yeah. final four weekend. DRS, a minute and a half here left in this break. We'll continue our pick mm-hmm. six plays and previews on the other side. What is your favorite total of final four weekend? Yeah, this one probably doesn't help out your UConn team total to the over at 87 and a half because I did take the under 161 and a half out there in Arizona for the game between UConn and Alabama just because, again, yeah, okay. you had a couple days off. These teams are very good. They know each other. They know each other now just based on film, not from playing each other. So you might be getting some of those sets back. But also, I do think they'll struggle a little bit from the three-point line both sides here in this basketball game just because they're playing in a giant football stadium. I'll lean towards the under 161 and a half there as my best total. Hey, we can get all those things. Team total under 74 and a hook for the Crimson Tide. Game total under 161 and a half. And UConn over 87 and a half. 88-70. Boom. We're good. Still a relatively high scoring game and stays under that pregame number. Boom. There it is. And UConn covers as an 11 and a half point favorite. DRS, why didn't you bet UConn laying 11 and a half? Why didn't I bet UConn lane 11 and a half? Yeah. Probably rooting for an upset at this just point. Just in the way yeah. we're breaking down the game. No. What? Yeah, what? no, it's a, it's a good point you bring out. It's just that what you're more comfortable in in that instance, just trying to play the game out in my mind as opposed to saying who's going to win or lose. I just think some of the offenses might struggle a little bit more here. But I do think UConn probably wins yeah. and does cover, yes. As they have in their previous 10 NCAA tournament victories over the last two years. I'll give you my favorite total on the other side of the break. We continue our final four pick six 
for this monumental weekend in college basketball up next. Come on, man. Your uncanny ability <laughs> in the final five seconds before we return from a commercial break of saying something wildin' out there uh -huh. is really, really good. They have said reports in the greater New York City area, 5.5 yeah. on the Richter Oof. scale. That's not a wow. small earthquake that we felt in New York City. 4.8 out in your neck of the woods in New Jersey. That's a pretty big one. I'm a little bit upset. I didn't really feel it. I was downstairs using the facilities. Man, that's tough, DRS. Again, perfect timing. We're previewing the Final Four between Zach Eady and DJ Burns. But come on. Would have loved an earthquake feel if we were live on air. started shaking you like on that. air. been good. Yeah, yeah it would have been a good part on the air at this point here. But just look, we're still yeah. here. We're still running through here. We got to get the people out here. You got a nice little rush. That shows you how big this weekend is. Like the weight of the yeah. world, Ben, is crashing down right now with earthquakes because of how big Seismic. the sports landscape is this weekend. Seismic shocks Seismic. all the way around. Oh, boy. Seismic. Ooh. The Earth's plates are literally shifting as we speak yeah. because of how yep. big a college basketball weekend is on the horizon. And it starts tonight with the Final Four in the Women's NCAA Tournament tonight in Cleveland, where my favorite total of the weekend comes. Iowa team total over mm -hmm. 82 and a half points. I mentioned Connecticut, right? Second most efficient defense in the country. But when you look at UConn in certain junctures this year, Iowa is favored by two and a half points, meaning at least outright, UConn is expected to lose the basketball game. Connecticut has not lost since Big East play began, but UConn did drop five games in non-conference play. Iowa not only has scored 89 or more points in three of its four NCAA tournament games, they play very up-tempo. They play with a very high-powered offense, of course, led by Caitlin Clark. They put up 94 against, Connect or against LSU on Monday night in the Elite Eight. UConn has allowed 78 or more points in all five losses this year. And all five of those losses for the Huskies have come against teams that at, reach, at least reached the Sweet 16 of the Women's NCAA Tournament. Here we are now in the Final Four. It's the key matchup. If Iowa gets over 82 and a half, sure, UConn probably has enough offensive firepower to keep up with the Hawkeyes. But UConn's best path to victory, DRS, is keeping Caitlin Clark and containing her as best as possible. And overall, Kate Morton, Gabby Marshall, Cynthia Falter, everybody to under 82 and a half. That's UConn's pathway, in my estimation, to an upset. I'm just not sure it happens. Yeah, Coach Bluter out there for Iowa. What's she going to do? Like, hey, look, you guys are short-staffed here. You guys are playing 40 minutes a night. What's the best way to do it? Walk it up the court and slow the game down? Absolutely not. Test them here. Test no. test your depth versus their depth. You should be able to win that one out. And the one thing we've seen there, nobody really slows down Iowa all that much. It's going to be a great game to no. watch back and forth, but plenty of offense. So I like that look here. If you're looking for Iowa to win, it's probably not with 68 points on the board. They're going to crack right. it into the 80s. You'll have some fun and watch that play out. That is not Iowa's strong suit. They are not mm -hmm. great defensively, not elite there like UConn is and like they are offensively, the most efficient offense in the country. Iowa gets up and down. And to DRS's point, the reason this Final Four run for UConn has been so phenomenal, not only the reemergence of Paige Beckers, but they lost five con uh, uh, significant contributors to their team this year, including AZ Fudd, who was one of their leaders in the backcourt alongside a Paige Beckers. The fact that UConn is here shorthanded is a testament to what they have done this year. But because of that, I was going to run up and down as they did in the Elite Eight against the Bayou Bengals. Favorite prop for this weekend in the Final Four is what, Donnie? Yeah, take a look. Coming into the tournament itself, we needed NC State to get on the run, and they did. But DJ Burns has been flat out tremendous here, starting with that Virginia game here where they went to overtime 73-65, to dropped 19 points in that game. Then North Carolina scored 20 points, then getting into the tournament himself, 16-24. The low point against Marquette, he played 27 minutes and only shot four times from the field for four points, but then bouncing back with 13 of 19 from the field in his last game against Duke and 29 points. And a lot of that going up against Filipowski, who's quite a tall guy. 
guy as well out there. So I'm going to go over 14 and a half points for DJ Burns Jr. He has to be a part. Yeah. There's no way, shape, or form you can look at NC State and say, if they're going to be competitive in this game, he's going to score yeah. four points, six points, or eight points in this game. He has to be a factor. And the good part about it is when you're a factor and you're a scorer, we're not looking for 19 and a half points to go over. It's 14 and a half. He should be able to get 15 points tonight. I think he's going to shoot double digit attempts from the field. Yeah. That should be good enough tonight. I'm going to go DJ Burns Jr. Have some fun with this one to watch and cheer on. Give me the 15 points tonight. Donnie, his 14 and a half points prop was the same number as well for that mm -hmm. Elite Eight matchup against the Blue Devils. It has not moved despite the fact that he scored 29. It's probably because he has a matchup against Zach Eady on the other side. At least that's mm -hmm. what we think on paper. Yep. Mohamed Diara, also the other forward in the front court for Kevin Keats's N State Wolfpack that can kind of move things out for NC State. A name to keep an eye on. But 14 and a half is not a number that DJ Burns should be intimidated by. I would also say my favorite prop for Burns, over two and a half assists with plus money. A number he has gone over with at least three dimes in three consecutive games in the big dance. Because if Zach Eady is there, DJ Burns has great court vision and is a great passer. And I would expect him to look out for some of those as well. My favorite prop in this Final Four weekend is one of my favorites from Elite Eight Sunday. It didn't work out against Tennessee. The Volunteers, the third most efficient defense in the country, but will allow you to shoot the three. Purdue did, but didn't do it successfully. And then they got away from it in the first half and just fed Zach Eady the basketball. He was a matchup nightmare for Rick Barnes and Tennessee. They were just three of 15 on Elite Eight Sunday against the Vols. But they entered that game as the best three-point shooting team in the country at 41%. So my favorite prop, is who I consider the X Factor for Purdue on this redemption tour. I felt this way about the Boilermakers and Mason Gillis since way back in January. Mason Gillis, two plus made three pointers. It's a minus 112 price. And if you look at the trends for Gillis, 0 of 3 against Grambling State in the opener in the NCAA tournament, made two plus against Utah State and Gonzaga. Then he went 0 of 3 against Tennessee. That should mean two plus in at least the next game here against NC State. And before the big dance, Mason Gillis made two or more threes in seven straight games for Purdue and in nine of the last 10 entering the NCAA tournament. And it's hard to really get a sense of this NC State team because we can look at their metrics, DRS, on Ken Palm. Those metrics are the sample size of 36 plus games now, not just this nine game win streak, ACC tournament, NCAA tournament. But you can go to Bart Torvik and you can narrow that sample size. And NC State has been one of the most efficient defenses in the big dance. But they have the third worst in terms of three-point attempt rate from their opponents. Or at least the third most frequent. Meaning their opponents are attempting 47% of their overall field goals from three. Marquette was 4 of 31. Duke barely made any despite being a good three-point shooting team. Some of it is shooting luck. And that's okay. Some of it is great defensive adjustments from Kevin Keats. But I believe Purdue will hoist from deep tomorrow night in Phoenix. And I believe Mason Gillis will hit at least two. Yeah, and also Mason Gillis for me, I had him on the agenda over the weekend last past weekend, and I need him just to make one of them. But I was on the same wavelength as you, saying Good. he doesn't shoot a ton of them, but apparently the stroke is there when he's wide open. He knocks him down. Only went 0 of 2. I was hoping for a late three-point shot. Didn't get that, but certainly should be able to yeah. bounce back based on his performances here throughout the tournament. And you're right. What's the M.O.? Like, do we really think NC State's going to make, you know what, B.J. Burns, one-on-one -on -one with Edie, we're not even going to collapse down there, so we're going to defend yeah. the three-point line. No, that's why Purdue is such a very good three-point shooting team. It's not that they're just shooting as many as they can. It's like, wow triple team on Zach Eady kick to me let me line this up like a free throw boom 40 percent as a team and away we go I like that look here he should bounce back didn't make one in the last game he should be able to get home this in this uh environment here final four specials category on the FanDuel Sportsbook that combine the men versus the women and some fun match bets also just various topics for Saturday night out in Phoenix what is your favorite specials bet on FD yeah, just one with Zach Eady. Like, I think he's going to be a big product in the game. That's every single game Purdue plays, but I do think he has a nice little mismatch advantage. If it is going to be DJ Burns at all for a lot of this game, he should get his, and quite frankly, he always gets his. And if I'm playing the angle where maybe on Saturday, both of these teams aren't going to be great three, or should I say both of the games, aren't going to have great three-point shooting, that means you probably can't rely on it. You got to go down low. So it took Zach Eady to be the top point scorer on Saturday for the men's at a plus-130 yeah. price.
So I looked at Zach Eady as well. There's a match bet for Zach mm-hmm. Eady versus both Caitlin Clark. She's minus yeah. 390. I actually think Clark will score more points than Eady in Final Four weekend. And versus Paige Beckers. Now, Paige Beckers' points prop for tonight's game in Cleveland against Iowa is 26 and a half. She is favored in this matchup. The number, though, for Zach Eady tomorrow night against NC State is less than that, as you would expect, because, or it's actually 26 and a half now, slightly on the rise. So it's the same number. But Paige Beckers is minus 150 in this match bet. Edie is plus 118. Beckers has gone over 26 and a half in three of the four games with at least 28, 28, and 32. And her floor here in the big dance is 24. Of course, we saw Edie put up 40. We've seen him put up 30. We've seen him put up 27 in three of the four games for the Boilermakers. But there's a good chance, DRS, 26 and a half for both Beckers and Edie. For them to finish around the same number, I'll take the plus money with Edie in this match bet against Paige Beckers. I like it. I do. I mean, anytime you're going to focus on Zach Eady, the one thing that we do know, he's going to be a centerpiece. And even in games where he started out slower in the tournament, maybe six or eight points, he's really hit the gas in the second half. Because the one thing that works out well in your favor, if we're expecting a blowout, that's one thing, which probably means Eady already had a ton of points. But late in the game, Purdue does the one thing you're supposed to do. Let's run our offense repeatedly in the final five minutes right through Zach Eady. Because two things are going to happen. He's either going to score or he's going to get fouled at this point. So if you need points late in that game and you don't have them, Edie is going to be the centerpiece and the focus of that offense late. Anything that has to do with Edie, I'm down with betting this weekend, Ben. All right, the pick six for Final Four weekend. But before Donnie and I speak next, that will be on Monday morning, a national champion will be crowned in women's college basketball. So DRS with the four teams left standing, entering Cleveland tonight for Final Four Friday. When all is said and done on Sunday evening, who will be a national champion? I'm going to go with Iowa at a plus three to one price here. It's the perfect caption to an unbelievable career for Caitlin Clark. And she's not going to go down either way as, oh, Dan Marino was a great quarterback, but didn't win anything. She's probably the best overall college basketball player we've ever seen. I just would love to see her go out with the ring. So this is more of not a handicap for myself. because yeah. I do think South Carolina probably is the best overall team and rightfully so. But I just want to see the storybook ending. Give me 30 points on Saturday or excuse me, Friday night. Give me another 30 on Sunday. Give me a close game where they win it. Yeah. That's the way to go out and style with the ring on your finger as she deserves. I took Iowa three to one. There has been a lot of conversation about greatness and the greatest of all time in women's college basketball history. A lot of people point to the historic championships that UConn won with Diana Taurasi or back in the day for Candace Parker at Tennessee or Maya Moore at UConn as well. Brianna Stewart won four in a row with the Huskies. But we don't see that level of dominance in women's college hoops anymore there's parody we haven't seen a back-to-back repeat national champion in women's college basketball since 2017 so the idea that somebody's greatness and the greatest of all time is directly tied to a ring in a single elimination tournament that we call madness is a little bit maddening to me Caitlin Clark is the greatest of all time for what she has done and not simply as a scorer and I agree with you DRS I think Iowa gets there, but I also have a UConn ticket at 15-1 to that I bet on Monday before their Elite Eight matchup against USC, so I'm going with the field. I told you my Mm. women's best bet is NC State plus 11.5. Yeah. I think South Carolina can get got. I'm not sure it's the Wolfpack, and I really think tonight is a toss-up between Connecticut and Iowa, but I'm going to go with the field at a plus 170 number. The Gamecocks minus 210 as a national title favorite. 